Hello everyone, so in this video, uh, we are taking off the top cover of the Olympus OM-1 35mm manual focus camera. And the reason I'm taking the top cover off is because the original OM-1 um, featured a, a piece of foam on the top near the hot shoe area. That foam um, over the time deteriorates and releases some very bad chemical that actually um, starts to eat away uh, on your prism inside the camera. So this one, the prism is actually physically damaged. Um, I did remove the top cover once, but I'm going to do it this time again because uh, even though I removed the foam in here, I still want to actually uh, recondition the prism. So when I look through the viewfinder, not sure if I'm going to be able to show this to you guys. When I'm looking through the viewfinder, you guys can see on the bottom area, there is some pretty obvious damage from the reflection where the top prism is damaged. So I want to kind of fix that issue as well this time, opening up the top. But then I'm also going to do a video at the same time. So you guys, when you get your OM-1, since it's over 40 years old, it, it might have the same issue. And then this would hopefully help you guys um, get the foam removed and clean out the interior just a little bit. Okay, so only some basic tools that you need. Um, you need a, um, a lens spanner, lens wrench. You can get this from Amazon for less than $20. I'll post the link down below on where you can get it. Uh, actually very, very useful for camera repairs and as well as lens repairs, okay? Uh, on top of this, some other tools you definitely need, which is a GIS Japanese style cross point screwdriver, uh, kind of like a small one because most of those Japanese cameras uses the same cross point GIS um, screws. If you use a regular Philips head screwdriver, you might damage your camera. You might strip those screws, which are kind of hard to replace nowadays. So make sure you have a proper screwdriver. Also, I'm going to post the link in uh, down below on where you can get it on Amazon. And uh, you need some tweezers, different sizes for easy access or easy holding of the parts when you take the cover open. And uh, um, I have a compass here. This compass I use for my leatherworking work. Uh, it's got two pointy head over here. This is kind of like an impromptu um, lens uh, spanner, uh, if you call it that way, because sometimes I could use this on some of the smaller, um, like, uh, um, how do you call those? Like the area that you actually need to get down small, where the, the lens spanner actually is not able to get small enough. So um, as an alternative, I use my compass to get to the even smaller areas that needs to be opened uh, because this point actually goes really, really close and actually close down all the way. So this is my impromptu tool, um, or optional. And if you guys have a, a other better ways, feel free to share in the comments down below on how you do it when you're opening those really small ones. Um, but otherwise, those are the basic tools you need, okay? And actually, it's not very hard to open the top cover. So the very first thing usually people do is, um, they're gonna open up this cover first, uh, which I already set my lens spanner to the same size of the two holes here. Let me see if I can zoom in. So right here, and you're just gonna gently put it down there and gently turn. And again, mine, I already pre-loosened, so it's pretty easy to turn on some of the cameras that you just bought. Um, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to turn this uh, top cover. And I, I find out some people actually use a, a very sticky rubber to grab onto the top to kind of open this because, again, this is not essential, okay, for servicing this camera. And I'm going to show you, if you do it wrong, uh, what are you going to get, okay? If you did it wrong and you use some other tools, you're going to scratch the top cover. This one, the OM-2, I tried to open up the top with my impromptu uh, compass tool and I, it actually damaged the top. Um, this one, on some of those that's really hard to turn, you definitely want to use your lens spanner and just very carefully, very gently apply even pressure and turn it carefully, okay? Um, but in this case, on my OM-1, since I already serviced it once, 
everything's pretty loosened up, okay? So you're gonna remove this part first. This is just the, the top cover. And I'm gonna leave all my tools in a safe area where I'm not gonna bump onto them. You have a plastic retainer, and then this is a lever. And on bottom of the lever, let's see if there's anything else. Nope. So that's pretty much it. So you got the lever successfully removed really quick. And uh, next, we're gonna work on actually removing um, the rewinding knob. Rewinding knob, also very easy. You need to find a pivoting point over here where the film is usually grabbed right here. You're gonna just lock it in place and then you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. And in, in turn, it's gonna loosen the top knob and just carefully remove and make sure you don't lose this little piece here. Uh, you have to align that later on so the top part would work properly, okay? But leave those on the side. Um, the top is very easily loosened or dropped down to the bottom. If it actually drops down and you close the film door, you're not gonna, you're gonna have a hard time, you know, getting it back up. So usually some people, they just use the tape to actually held onto the top part so it doesn't fall down once we remove the cover. So that's the second part you need to remove, okay? Um, those, I believe, they stay in place, but uh, for the ease of installation, I'm setting the ISO to 100 ISO right here, pointing to the shutter release button. So once you have um, <clears throat> the film rewind knob removed, uh, I forgot to mention there are actually two screws, kind of black, hard to see, two cross point screws here that you need to uh, loosen. And I think by this point, um, the top cover should already be um, pretty loosened and ready to go. And the very last one is this one, which is held up uh, pretty strongly. Uh, and this one I would suggest using the proper lens spanner to remove. So after you remove those two, uh, the top cover should come off. Okay, so let's, let's just give it a try. I'm gonna remove the cross point first. And just be really careful, don't push it down. I'm not using a tape, but just to be safe, you should use a tape if it's your first time doing it. Okay, leave the screws on the side. And make sure you remember which part goes where so you don't mess them up and kind of use the wrong screw for the wrong part, which is not gonna be good. All right, so the last, I guess, the thing that's holding the top would be this and we're just gonna use the lens spanner and turn it apply gentle pressure and just turn it once you get it loose and usually you can just like do this and it should like you know open up really quickly um so this is off leave it on the side and look at that so the top cover comes off and uh gonna just slowly remove the top which I'm gonna show you guys where the thing is damaged because I also have to remove the prism to show you guys the damage and also at the same time repair the damage, okay? So this is what the um, the bottom looks like. As you can see, I removed some foam, but there are some residues left. And today I am going in here and just very carefully, I'm gonna clean all the residues um, using a 91% isopropyl alcohol. It doesn't leave much water residue uh, on the camera, so um, less chance of getting stuff rusted, okay? So at this point, you can see this is the top of the OM-1. A pretty nicely designed camera. And if there's one thing that I want to show you guys is I actually damaged the, um, the hot shoe connector. The hot shoe connector was really old, and it was connected with a piece of black wire. And I actually... Um, the wire actually literally just fall off when I try to remove it and it's right here. So if your guy's wire is still connected to this hot shoe piece, be really careful, okay? Be really careful when you try to move this wire because again, it's very, very tricky. I don't use flash on my camera, so it doesn't really matter. I just leave the wire there. Later on, if I want to connect it, I'll just carefully connect this wire with the black wire on the hot shoe uh, bracket. And on the hot shoe bracket, very carefully, Take a closer look. There is a little washer. Don't lose this one. This goes in between the um, the adapter, the bracket, and the top cover. Okay. So if you lose that, it's not gonna hold the camera very steadily. So make sure you leave this on the side as well. 
another important thing, when you slowly open up the cover, I forgot to mention, again, I should have told you guys, make sure you know where your position of the button is. So I left the power to off and ISO to 100. Um, and another important thing is when you remove this, you see there's a little spring, very easily to get loose. This little springy thing, uh, make sure you don't lose it. This is on the top left corner. Just again, put it at a safe place. Don't let your cat get it, okay? Um, all right, so everything removed. Um, at this point, I just try not to touch any of those buttons because again, just to be safe, you should at this point take a picture of the, the setup in the top in case um, something gets bumped and the stuff gets removed and moved, okay? So just to be safe. Now we are on to the point of uh, removing um, this bracket here, two cross point screws right here, very easy to remove. And again, for me, because that wire I already, I already uh, disconnected, disconnected the wires, um, there is not much mystery left over here. Um, I don't have to worry about this bracket being knocked over or anything. And again, I'm just gonna gently remove this bracket and the screws, like so. See this black wire? Yep, that's that's what's connecting to the um, to that white wire that I just showed you guys, um, which is a shame that after 40 years, of course, things is gonna fall apart. Um, it's to be expected, okay? Um, let's see. So at this point, um, I am gonna remove the prism. The prism is held by, again, a spring-loaded bracket and two screws right here. One is kind of hard to see because there are some brown and white wires uh, hanging around. Just be careful working around those wires. Those are probably for the metering and stuff. Um, and you see this little screw right here, in here. You're gonna loosen that screw as well as this one down here where it's connecting to the bracket, kind of hard to see. Uh, you guys see there, right there. Also take a note of the direction of the bracket because later on when you put it on here, it's directional. You, you want to make sure um, this, the bracket's um, surface is actually flat against the bottom. Then you know it's, it's the correct direction, okay? So I am gonna slowly untwist and remove that little two pieces of the screws right in here. Now my, my screwdriver is uh, magnetized, which helps a lot. Uh, in removing those uh, little screws in here because it doesn't get lost um, in the camera. And just have your hand on here when you try to lose it because sometimes it might just pop up here and catch you surprisingly. Um, here you go. You're gonna remove this very gently. The left side, you have to be careful because sometimes there are wires on top. Don't yank it. Just carefully remove the wires and remove the top bracket for the prism, okay? Uh, once this is removed, you have a little plastic piece to protect the prism from damage of the bracket. Um, again, it's really a shame that they use that foam, which as you guys can see, this piece is already missing the silver lining on the on the, on the the surface of the, uh, where it's gonna look like this over here, it's already exposed. That's where you're gonna see that artifact, okay? So the artifact is actually reflecting that damaged area right there. Let's see if I can focus. Kind of hard. Um, anyway, so not only that, I'm also gonna try to remove this eyepiece as well to clean the interior of the eyepiece because there's a lot of dust. But again, let's remove the prism first. Be very careful, remove some of the wires um, surrounding it or just get it loose so they don't get stuck. And the prism should come out fairly easily, like just using some gentle lift. Okay, let's see. And here you go, the prism is off. I'll show you guys the damage. I am going to try to um, feather out this damage using some toothbrush and toothpaste. Once this is feathered out, um, it should not show that artifact in the viewfinder where if you guys already have a damaged prism, you're gonna see it. But if you remove it and you use a little toothbrush to kind of clean this area a little bit, get those area nice and smooth, 
it should not show up. Okay, so that is the hope uh, that I'm gonna try to achieve with this teardown of um, of the prism. And at this point, um, you can also inspect other parts of the camera. Now this one, the screen is also kind of damaged. So um, I have to find a replacement screen for this OM-1. Um, it's kind of scratched up from the bottom, which is, um, you know, a shame. Um, and over here, this is your chance to really nicely clean the interior space here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cotton tip and some of my Zeiss lens cleaner that I like to use. You can also use alcohol, to be honest. Um, but sometimes um, with coated surface, I, I'm usually cautious and use um, lens cleaner specifically because I don't want some older coated surface to get damaged. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in here and kind of clean this prism really nicely. This is your chance, okay? And once you put everything back up, there shouldn't be any fingerprints or nasty stuff. Use the dryer area to clean it. And again, be careful of the wires. Those wires are really brittle and uh, really thin. So be extra careful. Also a good time to clean the front. So look, now this piece, this eyepiece is very, very nicely cleaned, okay? Very easy to do once you get everything removed. And uh, now comes down to the really exciting part, um, which is, let's see. I am gonna go to the kitchen sink and get my old toothbrush, little toothpaste. I'm gonna try to just brush this area and make it flat and smooth, okay? Um, otherwise, this prism is actually in pretty good condition. There's no scratch or damage on the rest of the area. Uh, it's just this top, which leaves a really nasty looking thing. Um, like in here, if you look closely, some of the parts that's damaged, which is a shame. Um, anyway, I am gonna be back um, and we'll see you in a little bit. So uh, I think I'm done with uh, restoring the prism. The very last step, again, I'm using a dishwashing detergent to clear out and remove all the oil and residue on the glass. And we're just gonna put it back onto the camera and call it a day, okay? Um, I think I did the best I can. There are no, the edges are very smooth now. There are no jagged edges anymore. So the I think the impact on the viewfinder would be minimal. Plus we also cleared um, the actual view, viewfinder piece in the front of the camera. So it should look really nice by this point. The only thing for my camera is I need to find a replacement uh, um, a focusing screen for the camera to make sure the viewfinder you know looks nice and clean again. But otherwise we're pretty much done, okay? You're gonna wash this all. And I'm not wearing a glove because again, if you wash all the oil off, your hand should not, your hand shouldn't have any oil that contaminates the prism. So the prism now looks like this. And the area is, um, is very smooth now, kind of hard to focus, um, but the area is very smooth now, okay? So let's go back and we're gonna put it back onto the camera. All right, well, back in front of my desk, I'm gonna use a piece of actually shop towel. This one is kind of lint free, so just kind of gently clean the prism. Make sure it's nice and dry. And make sure no fingerprints anywhere. All right, so it looks pretty good. Considering the amount of damage that the foam caused, I think we did a pretty good job um, restoring. Let's see if I can zoom in. We did a pretty good job restoring the prism. Okay. Looking at the edge, that's the most important area. It's nice and smooth. Um, and this piece, the silver piece kind of got, you know, got loose, but I guess that shouldn't affect the performance that much. 
Um, I am going to put this piece back onto the camera now. And all you have to do, make sure one last time, check no dust anywhere. Um, just to be safe, I am going to clean the, um, the actual eyepiece one more time. Inside and out. Yeah, this eyepiece is properly cleaned, very clean. Okay, now let's just uh, the, you know, reverse process of putting, removing the prism. Now you're just gonna slowly job, carefully job the prism in there and make sure it situates nicely in front of the viewfinder. And I'm just gonna take a quick peek. Oh yeah, it actually looks uh, quite a lot better now. Um, still visible. That line is still visible, but not as bad as before, okay? Um, let's see. Not as bad as before, only I hope so. My last resort would be using one of the parts camera and uh, like a newer model that does not have the foam problem and just replace this uh, prism uh, once and for all, okay? But for now, it actually works fine. The area is uh, smoothed out and uh, we're gonna make sure all the wires go back to the proper place, which this two wires just sits in front of the prism. And now we're gonna very carefully find that plastic piece, put it on top, and uh, we're gonna have the bracket put back onto the camera. Again, notice the direction or the angle of this screw um, screw hole. You want to make sure it's parallel to the bottom. If you installed it the wrong way, you can see this one is actually tilted up, which is incorrect. You want this when it's left on here flat with the bottom, okay? So this requires a little pressure. Um, so when you install it, just make sure your hand is actually on the, on the thing a little bit to align it with the hole and then just gently drop that screw in there. And make sure you're installing the correct screw, okay? So, magnetized screwdriver definitely helps quite a lot, okay? So I'm gonna install this side first, just kind of align and drop it in and make sure that the screw goes into the hole because sometimes it misses it or you can't find where the hole is. This one actually went in. Now we're gonna go to the other side find the hole and then put that screw in here. This one is always a little tricky, I find, um, because of all the wires surrounding it. Just uh, again, gently and carefully, press it down and find the hole. Once you find it, you're, you feel it, you feel it going, you know, very nicely and kind of locking up onto everything. So once you um, kind of secure those two, the prism is very steadily locked in place right there. It's, it's not going to move much. Okay. Um, and this thing should get stuck on here as well. That means the position is correct. And now we check again. Now the other area is gone, but now we have a new kind of artifact right there. Kind of annoying, but again, it's at the bottom, so not as obvious as before. Um, but if you guys want to permanently fix this, you'll have to find a new prism. But that's not the topic of this video. So we already put everything in there. The last step is putting the top cover back on there, and it should be a pretty easy process, okay? Um, now, if you guys want, or if you actually damaged this little white wire, uh, now is your chance to, when you put the bracket back on there, 
you can kind of connect the black wire with the white wire right there to make the, the hot shoe work again. But again, that's, that's not my priority. So I'm gonna actually just leave it there. I probably don't want this wire to be exposed. So I'm gonna put that little tube in there protecting the wire. And uh, looks about right. Uh, I'm gonna start putting the bracket on here. Oh, wrong direction. This looks to be right. All right, those are two long silver screws. So the camera is fairly easy to put back together, okay? Um, nothing complicated or tricky about it. Not like some of the newer, more electronic versions. The top is gonna be a lot more complicated than, than this one, okay? So just a heads up. The OM1 is easy to service. The OM2 and up, I'm not so sure. All right. And I'm gonna just hide that little piece of wire somewhere since it's not connected to anything. Um, <clears throat> now, a couple of important things. Do not forget this little piece of washer, okay? This goes on to top right here and Anything else that we miss? Yes, this little spring. It has to go back before you put the cover back on. So you guys see, it's kind of hard to align this properly because either way, when you tighten it, it just um, it just moves a little bit. So now it, it moved just a little bit to the top. Uh, kind of annoying. But I'm gonna take it as is, and I'm just gonna put the washer on top and kind of secure it first. Okay, all right. So with that centered, um, everything else should be easier. Where's my impromptu? My compass comes in handy because this one is really small. Only the compass would be able to do it if I want to tighten it like so. Okay, try not to scratch stuff. All right, now we're putting everything back on again. This is like second disassembly already. Secure the thing and make sure you didn't lose any parts outside, okay? Otherwise you'll have to open it one more time. Um, let's quickly put this back on. Lens spanner, really, really necessary. And again, all the tools you need can be found on Amazon. So do not cheap out on tools. The last thing is the knob. Um, that springy piece is to control this so it have a poppy feeling. Feeling, um, You want to have the area uh, that the area that's popping goes inwards and stuck onto the actual lever there. And then you're gonna turn this way and then actually somehow install it on the film will rewind knob without that piece moving too much. And let's see if it works. 
Yep. So once this is very springy, you ink started correctly. Okay. Last step, very last step is give it a pivoting point and just turn it clockwise to secure it. And you are done with um, a full disassembly of the top of the Olympus OM-1 and a prism clean, okay? Double test, make sure everything works fine. Beautiful sound. So just make sure that spring is properly aligned so everything works fine. And let's double check the ISOs. Now the, the quirk about this one is uh, there is actually a click stop in between um, 1600 and 25. Um, so you don't really know if it's correct, but I assume this is the correct um, dial position, okay? So everything works fine. I look through the view viewfinder. The glass is much more clean now. Um, that annoying thing is not as bothering anymore, but it's still there. Um, but at least that would stop it from going bad and give you a slightly better um, shooting experience with your OM-1, okay? So I hope you guys find this video helpful. And if you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe. And I sure have more film camera maintenance videos coming out for you guys. Thanks again and uh, see you in the next video.